I said, I'll come run the cockpit. I'll take my piece of the action and y'all get to fish. And they said, well, wait a second. We only got to put up a third of the money, but we get to fish half the time. I said, y'all don't know what the hell you're doing in the cockpit. <laughs> and so I said, I'll run the cockpit. You too. So I brought everything out there. And how did it start out? Like, what was the origin story? Too much alcohol. Really? <laughs> okay. Because if God wanted us to have five glass boats, he would have given us five glass trees. It's, it's for fishermen. It's not for taking the wife and the wife's friends. It's, I think that it's a really, really pretty bit. And then there was a blur that went by and ended up in the cockpit as yeah. far as if I can remember uh -huh. correctly. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. State of Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm Nick Carullo, captain of the Showtime. Uh, I'm joined by Anthony Pino with Hooked Optics and the captain of the Blood Money. Every Tuesday, we are joined by a captain, mate, owner, or boat builder in the sport fishing industry. And before I welcome our guests today, I would like to remind you that we don't run ads and all we ask is that if this podcast brought you any value in any way, please share it with a friend. That said, I would like to welcome our guest of the most recent build, Misbehaving, the 71 Garlington, David Finkelstein. Thank you for joining us, David. So I know you are a part of the most recent build. And from what I hear, you also were maybe part of, was it the first build as well? Well, actually I owned uh, hull number three, which was oh. uh, the 58 uh, that was built as the classy lady. Okay. And then decided to build a 61. And after building the 61, decided we wanted something a little bit bigger. And so kick sizes around and finally came up with the 71. That's awesome. The boat looks yeah. good. Is, that, is the 58 the pelagic boat now, David? Yes, it is. I got you. I thought that was it. Yep. Yep. No, it's, gotcha. it's a classic. Great boat. And then you, you bought that boat used. That is correct. Correct. I had gotcha. it when I bought it. Uh, it had been through five or seven names. I guess the boat was built in 88. Oh, wow. So wow. that boat's 33 years old now. Wow. And That's so crazy. it's uh, it was crazy how you pulled up to different spots and everybody would say, I remember when I saw that boat here yeah. and as, know, as that, some other boat. Yeah, exactly. And so they were like, you know, when that pulled up in, in Isla in 1989, it looked like a spaceship compared yeah. to, you know, yeah. all the other Hatterses and Bertrams and stuff like that. And uh, just listening to some of the, you know, like Scotty Levin and Mikey Latham and, and all of those guys that fished around the world. And they were like, I know exactly where I saw that boat the first time I saw it. Interesting. And so we, uh, it, it was just something with the bottom on that boat, how well it pushed, how easy it pushed. And so they, after, and I think 80, like 90, 91 is when they added basically two and a half feet. And it went from a uh, 58 to a 61. How did, how do you compare that 58 to the 61? It almost had the exact same ride. Really? Uh, the 58 was a wood boat and the 61 was a cord boat. And so, yeah, there was a little bit of difference as far as, you know, foam versus the wood. But I mean, we caught a lot of fish on both boats. <laughs> yeah. So depending on think, yeah, actually. So this is what, the 58 bottom looked like. Mm -hmm. And so that was just wood with wood and glass. And then this is what the 61's bottom or the 71's bottom is. Wow. Oh, wow. So that's, you, that's a combination of, of it's like the Venicil. Exactly. Foam, you. glass, Kevlar. And so that's the bottom on the seven, on the 71 right here. And then this was just straight wood. Yeah. And what was the, do you so, know the, remember the weight of both those boats? Uh, the 58 was, I want to say, uh, 58,000 pounds. I want to say the 61 came in at like 68. Okay. Um, we had on the 58, I want to say we had like 1,250 gallons on the 61 we had 1490. Um, so that's where some of the weight, yeah, yeah. you know, comes yeah. in. Uh, with the 
with the 71, we're right at 100,000 pounds. Nice. Gotcha. So, so where, where'd your fishing career start, David? Like, I mean, it was, it was the, was the 58 uh, your first boat or did you start? No, no, I, I grew up fishing on charter boats in Pensacola, Florida. And then uh, when I got out of college, I bought a 43 Bertram, had it for about four years and said, I'm getting out of this, doing some other stuff, fishing with friends and went boatless for about 10 years and started fishing with a friend of mine over in Cabo, had a captain, had a crew and was like, you know what, when the time's right, I'll have my guys and I want to go fishing. I don't want to go run the deck for somebody else. I don't want to, you know, do any of that type of stuff have somebody that knows what they're doing. So uh, got lucky and found the right guys. And, and uh, the rest is kind of history. Been That's down in Los Sueños for about 15 years. Um, I've had my captain's been with me about almost 14 now. And my number one has been there about 12 and a half, almost 13 years now. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. Could you elaborate on that relationship? You know, um, like I've been with, with, with the people that I run a boat for, for going on 10 years next year. And I just, I always, always find it interesting to see like the, how the happy, how, how the marriage works out over that long of a time, you know, cause a lot of crew turnover in this industry, it's just kind of, kind of standard. And I always like to see what, what, what the keys are for, for that, that relationship long over the long haul, you know? You know, I, I think that it's a real uh, respect from both parties, the captain and crew knowing it's their boat, but it's not their boat. It's the owner's boat. And so if the owner's not having fun, kind of like a basketball team or a football team, you can't get rid of the team. You got to get rid of the head guy. With the, with the owner of a boat, if he isn't having fun, he's going to get out. And, you know, with my guys, you know, it's kind of one of those things that I tell people I've never had a conversation over the pitch or over the tone that we're having a conversation with right now with my guy. Jose and I are really, you know, yes, we're – captain owner but best friends also and uh it's one of those deals where you know they need something what do you need tell me what you need tell me what we need to do or how we need to do it because they make my life easier and they make it there's certain things like i made the trip through the canal this trip just because everything kind of fell into place but i'd been a boat owner for 14 years and never really made that type of trip and so uh, when everything came up with everything, uh, the situation just fell into place. So we said, hey, guys, you know, I've got a handful of buddies that are going to go. And we hopped on the boat in Key West and, and headed, to, headed to Los Sueños. Wow. How was that trip? It was really awesome. We went uh, Key West to Isla and then Isla Mujeres to Roytan, uh, Roytan to San Andreas, Colombia, and then down to the canal, through the canal, and back up to Los Sueños. Wow. So did would you about, do it again? I would do it again. Yeah. I tell everybody it was kind of a different deal because I was on the boat. It was like, you know, when we had our weather windows, we did it. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't tend not in it to try and save fuel or do any of that. Yeah. Um, one of the nays, yeah. we sat, it started blowing in Roatan, and I, we were looking at the weather. I told the guys, hey, I know it doesn't sound great, but we need to leave at two in the morning. And so we left at two in the morning and it blew for about two and a half, three hours and ended up, you know, ended up running about 25 knots for the first three hours. And then, you know, ran 33 knots the rest of the way. Wow. And that we ran uh, 14 hours that day, which usually people don't run, you know, uh, the boat 14 hours straight, but yeah. it was yeah, putting everything together. We got there. It was beautiful weather the entire way, except for the first three hours, but we knew it was going to be a little bumpy and uh, just boat ran like a dream. That's amazing. So how, how's, how are you liking that boat? I mean, how, how long was the build? It was right at three years. Three years? Yeah. Yeah. We had laid things up. Uh, they didn't have a mold for it. So we ended up, you know, whether you want to call it a jig or a plug, wherever you're from, and towards the end, we had an issue where we couldn't get fire retardant resin for the exhaust. There was a plant in, mm -hmm. in Chocolate Bayou here in Houston, in, in Freeport, Texas, that when it we froze had the big up, freeze, didn't it? it did, yeah. and shut everything down. 
And so it basically, if you didn't have your exhausts already made, you weren't getting them. Yeah. And so it, that, that put about a two and a half, three month stop on the program. But I can tell you, we, uh, we put the boat in the water, did a little bit of running around up there. And uh, when they got to Key West, there were 18 hours on the boat. And when we got to Los Sueños, there were 130 hours on the boat. And, you know, knock on wood, you know, but zero issues, nothing. Which How, is kind so of crazy. For for some people that may might not have a chance to build a boat or maybe thinking about building a boat, what's that like, you know? You, you you come up with an idea to build a boat and then you got to, I mean, it's a three-year process. It's got to be like kind of painstaking to a certain point, you know? I mean, I, I know it's, you know, you're getting everything the way you, exactly you want it. But I mean, you talk, you hear about some some lead times for some of these builders now. It's like you know, sometimes People the owner might them. not, yeah, the owner might be dead before he gets takes delivery. Well, you know, I, like I said, I had the 58 I had the 61, basically what I wanted didn't exist. I mean, unless you went to somebody to have it built. And so when Peter and I, who Peter Landewehr, who owns Garlington, started kicking it around, uh, got the naval architects to come in, basically take the bottom of the 61, widen it, stretch it to where it was the 61 bottom on a seven. It was basically a 61 Garlington on steroids. And at that point, you know, started putting everything together. Um, I figured this was going to be my last build. So I said, you know, when we travel, I want it to be like I'm at my house. So I put a full size King in the master, um, you know, plenty of room everywhere. And uh, so usually I think that it takes people probably four or five boats before they really understand what they want or how they're going to use it. You know, mm -hmm. when, when I started, when I was a kid, we started fishing. We had a 31 Bertram, okay? Decent fishing boat, great fishing boat, you know, 35 years ago. And if you walk down the dock, if, you, if the guy had a 42 Bertram or a 46, you were the man. I mean, everybody drooled over your boat. If you had a 54, you were God. <laughs> I mean, it was just... That's the way it was. And, um, you know, 25 years ago, Viking came out with their 50 plus or minus a couple of years. And that was everybody's starter boat. And they went from the 50 to the 55 and the 55 to the 61. And, you know, there wasn't like the, the Bertram Hatteras program where you went from a 31 to the 36 to the 39 to the 42 to the 46. Everybody just wanted it now. And, you know, those guys, um, you know, Pat builds an unbelievable boat, but it takes a year to get them. And so, you know, the custom boat route, I, I knew it was going to take, it probably took about six or eight months longer than I thought it was going to take. Yeah. Um, but I bought a Viking as an interim boat because I knew I could get rid of it. And mm -hmm. uh, we ended up getting rid of it last July. So we were boatless for about a year. Um, I wouldn't change anything. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when do you, from when you started, I mean, how many, were you able to kind of stick with, with your original plans and designs or did, did, did change thoughts come in, come in to your, you, you didn't have thoughts come into your head in the middle of the night? Be like, ah, oh, uh, no, basically, uh, we had changed the stuff from the 58 to the 61 as to how we used a boat. And so going to the 71, I knew that I wanted a four stateroom boat. And so that was the scenario. We got four staterooms, three heads. Um, you know, uh, I put two TVs on the boat, one in the master, one in the salon. Um, I hate to say uh, plain vanilla, a very nice interior. Everything's done very well. But as far as I didn't put TVs in every room. I didn't put VCRs in every room or Wi-Fi on the boat or any of that type of stuff. Um, most of the stuff that we do fishing out of Los Sueños or when we go to Cabo, um, we fish uh, a lot of day stuff. Um, I did put gyros on the boat because that's the first thing that somebody says, you know, you have a sea keeper or do you have gyros? Um, I went with quick as opposed to sea keeper for my gyros. I ended up setting up 
a good friend of mine in Los Sueños that does all uh, does a lot of boat maintenance. So he was the quick dealer. So it's not if you have a problem, it's just when you have a problem. Yeah, and so yeah. that made it simple. Exactly. <laughs> and so uh, it, it was a pretty smooth process. And what kind of power do you have in that? With, with the 1900 mans. Oh, interesting. And what's the top um, end on that? Top end right now, we're right at 41 knots. Nice. Cruise so at, ni- cruise at 19, 1920, we're 33 and a half. Wow. That's nice. Burning, burning 130 an hour. Interesting. Not you bad. could almost, you know, the day and age uh, that we live in now, that almost seems un- underpowered, but it like, like you said, the with your old your last two boats, they push very, very nicely, and I mean, exactly. it's still very good performance for that sort of horsepower. People didn't think that I was making the right move, but you. at the end of the day, is my money, and <laughs> and uh, I looked at the two thousands, and I gained a half a knot. Didn't do anything. Um, I looked at the caterpillars at the time, and to be honest with you, Matra who is our Caterpillar service in Costa Rica, isn't the best. Mm-hmm. And so I had Chris Smith with Pro Diesel that actually has his offices in Los Sueños. It's a man guy. And, uh, you know, after looking with Treasure Coast propellers as to putting the specs to it, I mean, they were within a knot of how the boat ran. I noticed when, you, when you're describing things like using the sea keepers and the and going with a specific engine package, it 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 has you, there's some foresight in the idea that you're dealing, you understand what you're dealing with in 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 the Central America region where you keep your boat that maybe you don't have to deal with back in the states. Like, I mean, could you elaborate a little bit more on that? Is is that the reason why you went with it to be what you would consider what you stated as like more plain Jane or vanilla? Um. Actually, you know, with Caterpillar, you know, most of the people in the States had gone with Cat, Cat, like a, in Los, down in Costa Rica, mm-hmm. their, their texts just aren't that good. Yeah. And so I didn't want to have to send John Bowen down or somebody from Gregory Poole down or somebody from Pan Tropic every time I had to work on my motors. Yeah. Um, you know, with the 61 that I put the C18 cats in it and they were great motors, but we had issues. So with the, with the mans, um, you know, if you, st- I mean, basically horsepower is horsepower. It doesn't matter whether it comes out of a man or an MTU or a cat, you know? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, when it comes to, Oh, well, you know, you put the, you know, the, the 2600 MTUs. Well, I'm not really getting anything. And when you put, I mean, with my 61, we had the boat for four years and we put 5,500 hours on the boat. With, May, with the MTU, my understanding, you know, with that package at 3,000 hours, you got a big uh, service coming down the pike. And I could buy another set of mans for yeah. the price it cost <laughs> to do yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And- that would almost, and that sort of service would probably require you to bring the boat back to the States. You know, it would be difficult it, to do that there. We've got a lot of, a lot down in Costa Rica to where it's not that big of an issue, mm-hmm. but it's one of those that, you know, speed is horsepower. Speed is weight. The more weight you're carrying, you know, the, the C-32s were almost 4,000 pounds more than the, 12 cylinder, 1900 horsepower, man, same horsepower minus 25 horsepower or 50 horsepower, whichever you want to go, but 4,000 pounds. Mm-hmm. And the, uh, the C 32s, we were burning 140, 150 an hour. Whereas with the mans we're burning at 33, knots, 130 an hour. Um, so, I mean, I, it's just one of those that for me, it was a simple situation. And, and, and the other situation is, is, Anything over 30 what knots, yeah. you can't walk anyways. Yeah. It's plenty Somebody of- tells you, oh, I run 37 knots. Well, you don't run 37 knots very often. <laughs> yeah. You know? And down and yeah. down in Costa Rica, the faster you go, the faster those those turtles and those logs and exactly. all the stuff that comes out of those rivers come up. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. It really is. 
And so obviously you have a great uh, and long time history with Garlington. Um, yes. So with this build, is this something that you kind of approach them with as well? Like, Hey, I want a bigger boat or did they already have, you know, the idea of wanting to do the bigger boat? I pushed, um, they, they, they built four other boats. They put the Garlington name on down in New Zealand and then shipped them back. There was a, a, a boat called the dream and on, which is a 78 slash 80 enclosed bridge. There's another one called the Kelsey Lee that has just changed names. I don't know what it was. Uh, the, both of those were in closed bridge. And then there was another one that's changed names. Now it's called the prowess, but it used to be the Haruko. And before that uh, was the, another one. And then the day money, I think is what it was when George Strait owned it. And it was a 78 slash 80. They had kind of um, taken the lines, but, it wasn't the same 5861 hull. So this, this 71 is the biggest one that they built in the States. And, uh, you know, so there's very few custom boats with four staterooms. And, you know, you got to really get to 68, 70 before you can comfortably put four decent sized staterooms in the boat, I believe. And, 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 and it's, you know, so right now we've got, Number two is getting ready to get laid up that's sold. And then number three is almost sold. Wow. These are 71s now? 71s, two? yeah. I got so, you. Something, so you kind of got this ball rolling for the 71s then? Exactly. And then I, once those two get started, I think I'll probably just start number four. Because really? I think it's probably going to be a five and a half, six-year process wow. gotcha. with, with getting everything going just to, to do it. I mean – both of y'all know the market. I mean, the market's stupid today. It's crazy. There isn't, in, there isn't anything out there. Um, John Bayless is eight years out. FNS is three years out. Duffy is three to four years out now. Um, you know, Garlington's the same way. So, you know, it's really uh, uh, back, in, back like in, in 06 to 2013. There weren't a whole lot of custom boats built. Mm -hmm. They're not, yeah. they ain't, they ain't coming from the dead, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, I mean, I just talked with some friends of mine that are looking for a boat and most of the boats today, you know, you've got built in equity when you yeah. like, I'm sure with your case is with sure with your case on, if he wanted to, I'm sure that you, that boat would sell for more today than you got in it. Yep. That's incredible. It is quick break. Everyone. We usually don't run ads, but considering it is holiday season. We'll be running sales up to 50% off. So please check out our website at billfishgear.com and also check out our co-host website, hookedoptics.com. Thanks for listening. So let's go uh, just delve into um, what you enjoy from a fishing standpoint and how you built the boat around around how that work, how, how it works best for you. I mean, you built the boat purpose built for the type of fishing that you like to do. And um, I would like to hear more about that. Yep. Um, you know, I, uh, I had fished up in the Gulf for a while. And once I figured out and been down to Costa Rica a couple of times, you know, it's, I can fly to Houston or I can fly from Houston to San Jose, get on the boat, fish the weekend and almost fly home before the guys that went fishing out of Texas left fished and finally finished cleaning their boat two days later. Wow. Um, and so we do a lot of sailfish fishing, mm -hmm. blue marlin fishing, um, the tuna fishing the last five years has gotten really good. The, they had ended up pushing the long liners and the Saint per Saint boat off 60 miles. And now they've just pushed them to a hundred. And, um, you can see the so effects of that already. Incredibly in the first, in the first nine years I was there, I didn't catch a tuna. And in the last five years, tuna fishing has saved the day on quite a few accounts, just because either sailfish fishing got slow or, you know, the bite wasn't very good and the tuners are there. Um, and so we, uh, do a lot of ballyhoo fishing. Um, we also do a lot of live bait fishing. Uh, we basically go from a Hannibal bank to Cabo is what our circuit is. We yeah. end up fishing uh, January to August in Costa Rica. Mid-August, head to Cabo. In Cabo, September, October, 
midway through November. And then we're back December to kind of, you know, relax a little bit before the season starts again. Gotcha. Nice. And have um, you been able to do the bad trips in Costa Rica? We've done. Yes, we we did not. We actually went out this last trip when I was there. We ran out the 70, the top on the 70 mile had been taken off. They, they've got long liners in Costa Rica. And so when it's rough or the guy or those guys don't want to drift, then they try and grab onto something and they end up snagging the the tops when they snag the tops and it gets too rough it takes jerks the top off so um we ended up running back out to the 80 caught a stripey but it was loaded up with dorado so the last trip wasn't uh, as good came back in shore we had uh first day we fished out of los sueños last tuesday we were three for four on blue marlin three for three on sales and caught three dorado and uh they fished on saturday with the with Peter Landerweir in Garlington and uh, raised 11 marlin were like, I think they said five for seven on blues, two for twos on stripies and uh, caught some tunas and dorados. So nice. we're catching fish. Good fishing. Yeah, it really is. And it was nice. It was warm. So the boat's yeah. in Los Sueños now, or are you make it up to Cabo? Oh, no, we're in Los Sueños now. So okay. we'll be in Los Sueños now until August. And then slide up to Cabo, do some Mag Bay trips, fish the Bisbees, do nice. some more Mag Bay, and then slide back. And do you do the uh, – I don't – I mean, I fished the Los Sueños series. I don't – I can't remember the last – Where do you do that, or do you, do you just, like – In the past, it? I did. Yeah. It changed a little bit. Um <clears throat> When it went from four anglers to five anglers, I got some, you know, there's a difference between fishing and knowing how to fish, if that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I've got a bunch of friends that like to fish, but not everybody knows how to, you know, hook their own fish, see the fish coming in, you know? So I, the last five years I hadn't fished the tournaments. I got you. Yeah. I just, it wasn't, uh, it was one of those deals where, it used to, okay, you can leave the marina at six o'clock. You know, there's only a, a six, there's a 50 mile barrier. Okay. Mm -hmm. You've got a 30 knot boat. What the hell do you need to leave the dock for at 5 30 in the morning? Where are you going to go? <laughs> and okay. some people that are leaving the dock at, the, at, at, at that <laughs> earlier and have way faster boots. Exactly. Yeah. Just, and so, you know, to be honest with you, I just got tired of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, gotcha. You know, it just, um, it, it might sound bad. I don't have five people I want to fish with. Yeah, that's you know? fair enough. It is, you know. <laughs> yeah. I like my guys on the boat. Yeah, you know, I don't like. I mean, it's a seventy-one foot boat. We had six people on the trip. Okay, I don't. I, I don't like uh, loading the boat down with people or have. I, mean, I don't like that many people on my boat. If, you yeah. know, I want. You know, it's just that that type of scenario. Gotcha. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Who do you usually who usually fishes with you when you go down there? Uh, I've got a couple of buddies, Stephen Whiteson. Fishes with me some. Uh, my buddy Bill Platt fishes with me. Dennis Coleman fishes with me. Um, other captain buddies go fishing. And uh, we just go have fun. My wife fishes. My yeah. kids fish. And uh, so I got one daughter at University of Arkansas and another daughter that's a junior in high school. So they're almost done. And I'm going to be spending a lot more time down there. <laughs> there you go. Going that route. Nice. Mm-hmm. Y'all, yeah, I, I think you've made it down there, Anthony. Have you ever made it down to Los to Costa Rica? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah I, I've I've been fortunate enough to fish on. Uh, uh, I used to fish on the Tranquilo a little bit for those tournaments, yep. and then I right. did the first. The first I was on the first light for a couple of those tournaments too. So I, it's a really incredible. They got a hell of a hell of a program, uh, program down there. You know, I mm -hmm. think it. Um, I just think it's amazing. It it works out well for you owners, and I can see why. It works out so well for for you guys, especially in, in Texas. And you know, I mean, you could just fly down, like you said. It it takes oh, it's you three less, hours. Yeah, it's it's just a, a, a it's not a full day experience for you to get even get there. So no, it I I can see why there's so many uh, uh, people from Texas and 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 South, uh, yeah, you know, uh, Louisiana, te Destin, exactly. You know, yeah, Texas, Makes Louisiana, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Florida, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, it's it's full. Yeah, it's really it's is. really it's really incredible. So I think you know they they have the infrastructure there, and they they have the fishing there, and I think it it works out really well. Mr. Royster, I mean, I'm sure it's 
it's sure it's sure i'm sure it's been a long road but it's i'm sure it's working out well for him now <laughs> oh he's killed it yeah i mean and and just to have the vision that he's got is mm -hmm. unbelievable yeah because it wasn't easy i can guarantee you that i can yeah i could only imagine especially the, the infrastructure like um I always find it interesting, like the even down to the plumbing and the way that you could actually flush toilet paper down. Like that's such a big yeah. thing. It sounds know? crazy, but you're right. Yeah, <laughs> he spent. I, I want to say it was like fifteen or eighteen million dollars on a water filtration plant before they even broke ground. Yeah. I mean, and now it's going on. I think I saw a book. It's like twenty years of Los Sueños, and I mean, it. You know, they came up with a coffee table book that they give to the owners and you know it was pretty awesome going through purchasing the land um you know buying the the finca the ranch that was there and then starting to develop i mean it's yeah. it's awesome interesting and then and then you said that you, you did you you fish with friends in cabo when you first started like kind of kind of delving into the pacific areas oh, i had a buddy of mine that called me one afternoon after 9 11 and he called me they went down and the, he and his buddy went down and fished on one of the picante boats mm -hmm. and he calls me in november and said hey we came in second place and the guy that i went fishing with said you know what i kind of like this marlin fishing shit i think i'm gonna buy a boat and so i always said i was never really going to go fish the Bisbees or anything like that until I thought I had a program that I could win it with. Mm -hmm. So I get a call from Dave and he tells me Brady bought this boat. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna come out and look. So this guy had bought a 60 foot ocean, nice boat. So mm -hmm. we, I fly out, I look at it and they had, all they knew how to do was somebody hand them the rod. They sit in the chair and turn the handle. And so I grew up you know, lure fishing, doing all that good stuff. And I told the guys, all right, here's the deal. I'll come out and do it. This was in 2004. And, uh, or actually no, it was in 2002. I said, I'll come run the cockpit. I'll take my piece of the action and y'all get to fish. And they said, well, wait a second. We only got to put up a third of the money, but we get to fish half the time. I said, y'all don't know what the hell you're doing in the cockpit. <laughs> and so I said, I'll run the cockpit. You too. So I brought everything out there. First year, we caught a bunch of fish, but didn't, weren't able to kill anything. The second year we go, we win the whole thing, nice. uh, 2005. And so, uh, you know, it was one of those deals where everything fell into place. We were the first team to win over a million bucks. Wow. And uh, back then it was $16,000 to go across the board. Yeah. Wow. And uh, so it was, it was just an unbelievable experience. So I fished another two years with them. And then uh, decided, you know what? It's time to to do my own thing. Gotcha. So, gotcha. And that was that, that was your first experience, kind of in the Pacific, as the Cabo, or did you do Costa Rica before that? Oh, I've been both. I mean, I had gotcha. you know just fun trips over to Cabo, but not I had never fished the tournaments or anything like that. Gotcha. And then I had been to yeah, I guess I started in Costa Rica, and then uh, in '03 was my gotcha. first trip down to Los Sueños. Nice. What's that process like when you decide, you know, like you're kicking around the idea of, of, of taking your boat and leaving it out of the country for basically its entire life. What, what, what goes into that? Like, what's the, what's the value assessment when you, when you do something like that? Um, it's a, it's a keep it simple mm -hmm. to be honest with you with systems, everything else. If you think you need two bilge pump by four, you know, if you think you need, you know, you know, you put, put it together, figure out what fuel filters you need, what, you know, what water filters you need, water maker. Um, you know, it's just a convenience thing up here in the Gulf. Uh, it's kind of like a wash tub. So if the wind's blowing, you might not get to go fishing for a couple of weeks down there. It's like groundhog day. You really don't even look at the weather. You yeah. just go down to the boat and get on the boat and go. Um, and so that's what it was. I had two young girls at the time when I started and so I didn't want to go out there and beat the hell out of them. I wanted them to enjoy it. And I mean, they've been on boat, uh, my younger one since she was 18 months and my older one since she was three years old. And, uh, but it's a commitment, you know, to say, okay, I'm gonna go down there and spend five to seven days a month putting it together. And, uh, but I have loved doing it for the last 15 years. Yeah. I mean, that's a, it's a hell of a yeah. long time to be doing that. It is. I mean, you see people come, you see them go, you, you know, people move different spots and all that other good stuff. And, uh, yeah, you gotta love it. 
if you you know it's it's not one of those that oh I want to you know I guess some people like to turn some things into an ego thing. It's really not an ego thing. It's just what you enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. And so I'd rather be hanging out on the boat than going hunting. You know, in 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 Texas, or yeah, the um, the marina business is a seven and a half eight month a year business because when winter rolls around, people are going hunting, and so. I'm just not a hunter. Uh, nice. It was one of those that, that I don't like the cold. So when <laughs> it gets cold here, I'm going south. Yeah, you, you sir, are definitely one of. I don't know about you, Nick, but I'm I'm one of those one of those uh, anomalies in the industry too, where like I just don't hunt. Like it's just not something no. that I don't. I don't either. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. They're like, oh, well, we're going to the ranch. Have fun. Uh, you know. Oh, uh, you know, it's. I, I don't really. I, I don't like the cold. I remember one time I went duck hunting and they were chipping the ice on the way back to the duck, out to the duck line. And I said, forget this shit. <laughs> I, it is not me. Not at all. Yeah. So I, I, I just, I don't do that. So. Gotcha. That's cool. Uh, Definitely cut from the same cloth there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, right. One of our, our, our topics, uh, that me and Anthony usually bring up and uh, I'm sure you could talk about it is I'm sure you have the new uh, sonar. Yes, sir. And ha- t- talk to us about that. Tell us how that's kind of changed the, changed the industry and kind of, you got to have it now. You know, I, uh, two years ago I was up in Cabo and was talking to Johnny Legrone who was fishing uh, with TJ Dobson and he comes in and they had caught a black marlin that day. And he said, Yep, TJ told me he's coming up on the right short. And he said, three minutes later, I, uh, so I called Garlington and said, hey, we're putting a sonar in. It's one of those deals, just like the gyro. If you build it in, instead of trying to build the boat around it, it's pretty simple. Yeah. I've been on tournaments where we won with the sonar, but last you know this last tournament over at the bisbees there wasn't a boat that had a sonar in that one every boat that fit the the in the big bisbees need none of the boats that caught fish have a sonar in it wow um you know it's it's one of those scenarios that if you don't have it buy one if you don't if you don't need one it's a personal preference thing people want to talk about oh turn it off come on man turn that's it a off. joke <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turn it yeah. off. Right. I, you know, the way I the way I explained it to my owners when we were we we had the install it it was a pretty in, er, really pretty easy install. But I was like, I don't know if we'll ever go win a tournament using this thing. But I I, I do have a feeling like it's going to increase your your overall experience. If 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 getting going out there getting bites and having action is why you go fishing then I think that yep. it's, it's well worth the investment when you're, you know, and the grand scheme of things like you 71 foot boat, it's kind of just like something like it makes too much sense not to, or to have, you know, I mean, if, if you're going to build a five, six, eight, ten million $10 million boats, what's, what's, what's 125,000 bucks. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Uh, I mean, I'm not trying to sound like an asshole or anything like that, but no. at the end of the day, that's just the fact. Yeah. You know, I mean, on most of these boats, I'm sure the same on your, like most, and your electronics package is more than most people spend on boats. Yeah. You know? And so it's one of those deals that if you have, you have, if you don't, then that's your own personal preference. Yeah. I had gotten a call from uh, Jen Copeland, you know, I mean, like I told her, Hey, it's a tool. Okay. Back in the day, your 50 foot boat today is your 65 to 70 foot boat. Boats a tool. You know, your boat used to be a, you know, 22, 23 knot boat. Now, if you're not a 30 knot cruise, you're standing still, you know what? I mean, it's all relative today. And, uh, you know, I know that they're coming up with some, I know Coden's come up with a couple of, uh, a smaller unit. That's a 35 or $40,000 unit that I've seen a lot of people down in Los Buenos on the 50 foot boats put into place. I mean, you know, there are substitutes for, you know, the Furuno program. Um, but I, yeah, it's just a, I guess it's, it's kind of like the gyro. Do you care if you, you want to sit like a duck when it's rough or you want to rock side to side? You want to be comfortable um, or not? 
Right. Exactly. <laughs> so it's a, uh, it's just all personal preference. You know, do I think that tournaments should say, oh, well, now we're going to have a, a sonar group and a non-sonar group? Come on, that's just idiotic. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to alienate people either way if you do that. So. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's true. And so, you know, when, like, when we used to fish the tournaments in Los Sueños, I would have me and one of my good friends and then my two deckhands would fish with us. Yeah. I love fishing it that way because – you know what? If you got guys that don't fish every day, they're not going to catch their own fish. And then some owners started complaining because minor on the Spanish fly, one top angler, and they got pissed because a Tico guy kept winning all the money. And so that's when they changed it to no professional anglers. Then how do you classify a professional angler? Yeah. I mean, is, yeah. it, is it a captain? Is it a deckhand? You know, oh, well, this guy hadn't fished for the last five years, so now he's not a professional anymore. But he still fishes every day. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I had somebody that, uh, that uh, I, I had been aware of a situation that <clears throat> during the tournaments where they had actually excluded somebody and considered him a professional angler who had fished with me a, a little bit on the boat on, on the blood money the summer right. before. And I was like, well, if that dude's a, prof you know, like I was like, there's no way that guy's a professional <laughs> anchor. Right. <laughs> exactly. No, it's, it, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. It's funny, yeah. but I mean, it's just one of those that, I mean, right or wrong, people are going to have something to complain about, mm -hmm. you know, whichever. I mean, at the end of the day, you can sit there and you can chase every fish you want to fish on, but you don't know what that fish is. You know, is it a 150 pounder? Or is it an 800 pounder? I've, I've I mean, chased, you still got to get the bite. I've yeah. chased many, uh, many uh, porpoises and whales around with that <laughs> thing already. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, just, I feel like I was driving up on a grander, which yeah. certainly was. It was a pilot whale. <laughs> right. It was like, holy shit, there he is. Uh, uh, yep. It's. It, I, I feel like it's just going to be like anything else, you know, in the hands of somebody capable, it's going to be something that, that really is going to separate you. But just because you have it doesn't mean that it's going to gonna really gonna change get the bite. things. You know, yeah, you know? no, that's true. So I mean, yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I fished tournaments and I fished a tournament in the Gulf a couple of years, year and a half ago. And I was, I mean, I was walking in to go to the restroom. My, the guy that owned the boat came walking out and said, we're about to get the bite and we got a bite. And, uh, he was sitting in there watching TV with his headphones on and the captain said, Hey, you know, we got one on the sonar. And then we released that fish. And the next day I caught one and we never saw it on the sonar. Yeah. yeah. And so it's just, you know, and, and from, from where that fish ate, I mean, it was like, I mean, a Volkswagen came out of the sky. I mean, it was the, how it didn't show up on the sonar is something that kind of, you know, you say, holy shit. I mean, yeah, it yeah. was, it was literally 20 yards behind the boat when it ate. Wow. So. so another thing we ask, we ask people, David is, you know, do you have any special days that have always stuck with you fishing, you know, special trips or days it doesn't always have to be your your best day blue marlin fishing or whatever, but just something that, that a day that you, that stuck with sticks with you and it is a reminder of why you do, why, why you, you spend all the time money to do in this stuff. What, do you have any yeah. days that stick out? I, you know, I, it's, it's the, I can tell you it's the day we won the Bisbee. Yeah. I mean, I remember like it was yesterday, you know, fish came up two fifteen in the afternoon, you know, the last day of the tournament. And uh, ate the right short, got everything cleared. And uh, I'm sitting there wiring the fish and I'm looking down. And, uh, Naya was the captain. And I told him, I said, 600. You know, we put the fish in the boat, headed to the scales. And, you know, it was 565. And uh, it was one of those deals where you just sit there and it was like, yeah. I mean, I remember at the time I, I walked in and called a buddy of mine. And I said, you ain't going to believe this. I think we just won the Bisbee. Wow. I mean, it, it, was, it was, you know. I still get chills talking about it. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's one of those type of deals that is like, you know, I've been lucky enough, knock on wood, to, to win a bunch of tournaments. And, you know, but, you know, there's just a handful of them that, you know, that when you win the whole motherfucker, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's, that's the, you know, that's winning the tournament. Not, yeah. you, know, you know, oh, we got a second place here. Or, oh, we got a daily here when you, when you hold that one trophy up where, yeah, yeah. you know, it says first place, that's it's special. It is. It really is. is. Uh-huh. So, I mean, that's what, yeah. 
And I can't say, I mean, nobody fishes for dollars mm -hmm. because like there isn't anything that I'm going to win for me. That's going to change my lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yes. For the guys on the boat, you know, to, to win a big one, it will change their lifestyle. But as far as like, I don't do it because I'm making money or I don't do it because I need to win the tournament yeah. to pay the guys. Yeah, yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, um, this is a bonus. I mean, that's it. That's a you bonus. get lucky, you and get your shot and you make the best of it. But yeah, the winning, the winning parts, the, that's the special part. <laughs> it is. Oh, it's no, it's, it's it not easy. Definitely. It didn't, it didn't. And you know, there, there, you got some guys that, you know what, you know, yeah, you know, that everybody in their own rights are good fishermen. You know, you know, in the Gulf now with the sonars and doing a lot of live baiting, there are people that have separated themselves. There's no doubt about it. You know, up in Cabo, there are guys that have separated themselves being able to use equipment. Um, but you still got to get lucky. Yeah. 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 You know, you still got it. It still always boils down to you got to get the bike. You were and you said you were lure fishing for that. The 565. Yeah. I find it. Yep. I find it so interesting. So I've known, I mean, my uncle fished on the Tranquilo for a couple years oh, up yeah. there. You know, I just find it so interesting that a lot of those locals up there, they go live baiting. And then you see somebody like Victor, who inc incredible, incredible fisherman. He's a go great up there, fisherman. Yeah. And go up there and go lure fishing. And, you know, I'm just, I, I, I just look at it. If I, with the slim chance that I ever get to run a boat there for that tournament, I'm like, I'm pulling fucking lures. <laughs> you, know? you know, when fishing is slow. I mean, it's, it is really hard for me to sit there and soak tunas on the Gordo Bank or on the 95 or on the 1150 when you've got 180 boats or 200 boats doing the same thing on the same body of water. It's, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely, I'm a lure guy, but you know, it's one of those that if we, uh, I've got it set up to where we can roll over pretty quick. If, mm -hmm. if we get live bait and have a spot and we want to go hammer an area and, and now being able to use the sonar, um, we'll pull out all the stops and just figure it out. Yeah. How many boats I, were in it when th that year you won it? I want to say it was like 144. Wow. That's sick. It is. That's yep, amazing. Uh, second day, nobody killed a fish. And second, so the third day the money rolled over. Wow. And, uh, oh yeah. I mean, two fifteen. we had to fish in the boat at three o'clock, three 30. We had to fish on the scales. Oh, that's on the last day, right? Oh, last day. Oh, that's <laughs> the, that's like, the, that's the way like, to do it. They're like, what are you going to, what are we going to do? What I said, we're going to go to the dock. We're going to start drinking. That's what <laughs> uh, we're going to do. Uh, I was like, Hey, we put it up there. If somebody beats it. Good on you. We yeah, gave yeah. them something to shoot at. Yeah, but that, when we put it in the boat. It was like, holy shit, this is a nice. That must have been. Uh, I don't. I mean, I'm sure that you're fishing up to that point. I mean, it seems like that that fishing that tournament can be brutally slow some years. And it was the did, only did, bite we had. So, wow. oh my God. so <laughs> two so days the, of fishing. <laughs> two days of fishing. The only bite we had. So That's the morale. It. The morale went from absolutely. Yeah bottom bottom of the ocean to up above Ex like oh <laughs> that's incredible unbelievable yeah. I, I i feel like you live for those those stories is you know that's that's another reason why you would put yourself through that is that that feeling when it does finally happen is is irreplaceable you know oh it is no there's you know it's one of those that i mean when i was a kid i mean like probably 20 years before that i was over in cabo and i bought i bought a bisbee jacket and you know because you, you just you see it you it's an incredible tournament i'm sure it's, it's you know very similar to the you know to the you know white marlin open and and that type of stuff that, yeah it's, a, it's, it's the show yeah their events unto themselves you know like it's yeah. it's like people people up here they i know people that don't know know anything or do any do any fishing in general or don't know much about it but they still base their vacations around just that event because you know it's so unique and it's so you know and I think it just it just puts the town on another the the atmosphere on another level in the town and right. I, I feel like I've never been to the Bisbee but it seems very similar from what I can hear. It is, it really is. And so they uh, yeah. just like they had really slow fishing this year. They caught a couple of fish, but. Uh, you know, it's just one of those that over there, if they don't get a lot of storms and they don't have a storm about a week, week and a half before the tournament, fish is going to be good. If they get a storm a week, a week and a half before, it's going to churn it up, changes the thermocline or does something. 
and they shut down. So it's a great spot. Yeah. I would highly recommend it. And you're going back and you you do the Mag Bay thing and. Oh yeah. I, I mean, how long have you been doing that? I actually, the first we only went when I got the the Viking. We went on the Viking. I did that about. I did it only one time about three years ago now, and uh, it was me and my wife, three deckhands, and my captain. And in two and a half days, we released 140. And that was all we wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a, you know, it's not a glory thing for me. I'm not trying to, to you know, release a jillion fish, but yeah. we had a great time. I tell you what, it was definitely a, uh, it's one of those epic trips where you yeah. just kind of, uh, you get there and the first night we went, we stayed in a little bay called Santa Maria, which is just north of Mag Bay and I anchored up in there one night. It was gorgeous. Uh, fished the next day, uh, stayed in Mag Bay, then slid back out the next day and fished a half a day. And it just kept getting better and better. So that's yeah. sure you're looking forward to the, uh, looking the forward to the there in Los, Los Suenius and then going up there. Exactly. With the yep. new boat. Yep. That's a fact. Y'all ever, so y'all going to make it down to Los Suenius at all? I, I don't know. I, I, I'd, I'd like to, but I, I don't really have any plans, trips planned right now, but they, they can't come up for me pretty like randomly so hopefully so i I do enjoy the the sail fishing and the 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 bloom the you know i've never been to the fads but i just love the idea of you know being able to pick at the sails all day or even have a good bite and then having that blue marlin show up at some point of the day you know having that having that variety is it's a wonderful place and you know it is I fish it a lot on that little first light, or I used to fish it a lot on that first light. And, you know, it's one of the few places you could still go fish a small boat and you can. be real comfortable, you know? Yeah. No, that's a fact. If y'all want to come down, you're more than welcome. Let me know. That'd be awesome. Appreciate it. Definitely. Thank you. All right. So. Well, thank you. We appreciate your time. This was, that was, that was fun. Fantastic. Well, anytime, look forward to talking to y'all again soon. Yes, sir. Good luck with the, uh, with the, with the boat. Hope you crush it. Well, we're, we're looking forward to it. Hopefully, you'll be seeing the misbehaving's name floating around. I'm, I'm sure, sure we will. I'm sure we will. <laughs> uh, sounds great, guys. Thanks. Talk to you Thank soon. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, David. Okay. okay, take care. If anyone has any questions, send them over to podcast at billfish.site. Thanks for listening. Catch you next time.